Hey everybody, welcome back. This is uh, developing a dynamic website from start to finish. We're on lesson 16. And so far we've made our way into the admin panel. We're working on the pages, uh, or the uh, page manager that is. Right now we have it set up so that we're dynamically pulling a list of pages and if we click on one of these pages the data or some of the data that we've chosen will pull up in a form that we've created to the right of it. Now what we haven't done is handled what happens when the uh, form is submitted which is uh, basically when we click this button here Uh, I did make one error uh, in the uh, while well, reviewing the, the previous video. We're going to be working on a update query, not an insert query. Uh, eventually, we'll be working on an insert query, but uh, in order to modify these pages, we'll be using the update query at this point, anyways. So if we uh, head back to Dreamweaver, you'll see I have our uh, admin folder open here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the index. Uh, just like in the uh, previous videos, I tend to open this up just in case uh, there's anything I decide to do in here. Right now we're going to be more focused on what's in the content folder and the uh, pages document so we have this query here that is pulling the page names and then the form that's being displayed and populated uh, if a uh, page has been clicked on or if one of these links has been clicked on and before we do that I noticed an error here we're missing a uh, the end of that tag there for that input on uh, line 50, at least on mine. Now what I like to do, and this is, uh, you can do this other ways, but uh, what I prefer to do is make an input. So I'm just going to copy that submit input, not the paragraph tags. And I'm going to change the type to hidden. Change the name to submitted as in the form has gone through and we're going to change the value to Juan so now we can check against this uh, submitted uh, value so when the page reloads or if the form or sorry when the form is submitted we can check to see if that value is one or if even submitted has a value however we want to do it and then we can move from there now you could technically uh, check against any of these if you wanted to uh, this is just the way I do it so now what we need to do is create that conditional that checks and just so that we're clear this will not show up on the page this is a hidden field it's a way to send a value back to the page uh, kind of without the user knowing it this value is uh, strictly for our uses and uh, the uh, and the user doesn't need to know about it the only other value we need to send is let's go ahead and copy this we're going to send another hidden value and this one is going to be ID because we need to know we're going to need to know what page has been submitted so we're going to go ahead and replace this one. Let's go ahead and echo out 
So we'll just copy this here. Oops, sorry. And paste it here, and we're going to change this to ID. So now we have two hidden values. One is submitted and one is ID. This ID is going to allow us to tell MySQL which record we're going to affect. Now, before we do any other, uh, or before we start working on that conditional in the query, we need to check the action here. We need to make sure that the form is going to reload the page and it's going to reload opening the same page uh, not to be confusing but uh, it's going to open up the same record we'll say that is already open thus it'll show that we have changed things you'll see the change that you made so we'll want to do that update query before the uh, select query on, on 35 so what we're going to do in the action is we're going to pretty much mimic a lot of what's going on on line 18 with the uh, the page equals pages and, and so on. So we'll say index so let's just go ahead and copy some of that So we're going to do question mark, which just means pull up the uh, same page. Page equals pages. And ID equals. And this is where we can come over here and grab this opened ID. Make a copy of it and toss it there. If you've caught on. We're going to have access to the uh, the opened ID twice now, here and here, and you might ask why even create this hidden field, or you may not ask that, but I wanted to address that before, in case anybody did catch that. I'm going to bump this down a notch here. Um, I'm going to do this here within the post array rather than the get array because at some point I foresee us changing the way this this is done uh, one way or the other so this will make sure that this still works no matter what we do here um, so that's my, my short answer for now so I'm going to save it um, so what we can do is let's go ahead and bump this if statement down and let's go ahead and copy it just to save some time paste and toss in the uh, closing curly bracket we're going to change the uh, git to post And we're going to change the key here to submitted. So, like mentioned before, we're going to check to see if this even exists. Then we're going to see if there's a value to it. And we're even going to go one step further and say, let's make sure that value is equal to 1, which pretty much verifies that we have submitted the form uh, and let's go ahead and just copy this block here too because we're going to use it over uh, and just change out the uh, query I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here too while I'm at it just bump these guys out and let's go ahead and strip out the query here and we'll start from scratch so for 
those who haven't done an update query, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to go ahead and write out most of it, and then I'll explain. So we're going to do update. And then we need to choose what table, pages. We're going to tell it to set. And now we list the fields which we want to update which in this case are not all the fields in the in the table just the ones we have in this form so we want the title equals post title and the proper format would be comma and then we do another one and the next one is a name so to save time we can pretty much copy this and paste it and actually since we have one more paste it again and just delete that last comma change title here to name and here to name and then body here and body so this is not the end of it but I want to go through what we've done so update pages which is the table and we're going to tell it to set the title equal to whatever is in this field when the form is submitted and we're getting title from the name here and these are the field names within the database so make sure we're on the same page there uh, so we're also going to update the name and the body but we're missing something very important um, we need to specify which record to update so we need to say we need to give it a condition where ID equals post ID so now if we submit this form after we make a change we should see the change happen in the form again because what we're going to do is not only submit the form but we're going to keep the page but we're going to keep the form open with that same record but since we're updating the database before we're running the select query we're good, we should have the updated data so let's uh, let's go ahead and run this and uh, we'll see if we got everything right here I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, link and then just kind of do a refresh just to make sure and let's just choose the home page I'm just going to do something simple so it's obvious. And let's just change the uh, page title. Welcome to atom.cms. And if you haven't noticed, I've been having the tendency to use CSS instead of CMS and um, if anybody catches me doing that, let me know. And uh, make sure you fix that yourself. Um, uh, so we're going to hit Save Changes. And if all goes well, once I release this, uh, we should see pretty much exactly what we see now, which will mean that the database was updated and the new page title is in there. If we didn't do it right, we'll see some errors, hopefully. Alright, so we, we didn't, we missed something. Because it refreshed back to this. But let's do one last check and, and run home here. Yeah, so we did not affect the site. So I'm just going to flip back and forth here really quick and see if I can find the issue. Uh, 
I see it. We need to put uh, quotes, single quotes, around these uh, variables here. As you see down here. And I have a feeling that's what we missed out. And uh, I'm leaving this in just because it's it's good to see. Um, I don't want to. I want to show. I want to show you a uh, polished product, but I don't want to show you a lie. I want to show you. You know, things go wrong. You miss things. Um, so let's see if we've got that right this time. So let's save and upload. Going back. Got pages. Open home. Let's say welcome to atom.cms and we're going to go ahead and click save and there we go we did it and just to make sure let's click on another page and then click on home we did it we've gone ahead and we've updated it so now we have a CMS where you can go into an admin panel or backend, however we want to call it, um, and change the contents of the page. So let's flip back over here, refresh the home page. Welcome to Adam CMS. So we're getting somewhere here. Now, I'll give you a heads up. One, of course, we don't we don't want people editing this HTML. Especially if this is a client. If it's you, yeah, maybe, like I mentioned before. But uh, if you're giving this site to a client to take over, you don't you don't want them around this this HTML. Uh, it's that's just not going to work. So before this uh, lesson's over, I'll show you or give you a quick run through on the uh, the tool we're going to use. But uh, I'm also going to note that we're going to need to do so, a few things here that are going to become issues, mainly with the body, but we're going to need to do it with a couple things. Um, we don't have an issue yet, but soon what we're going to find out is especially in something like a body of a page where there's a lot of text there's going to be a very good chance that it's going to include characters that uh, PHP doesn't necessarily cooperate with such as maybe a single quote or a double quote which if we are echoing out uh, the body here and there's a single or double quote in there it could completely screw up what we've got going on here it could make this update uh, think that this right here or wherever that double quote is it can make it think that that's the end of the statement thus breaking the rest of the page um, and there's a handful of functions that are pre-built into PHP to handle items such as that where you basically do what's called escaping which I can't remember if we've we've shown that or not but escaping is when you use a say double quote within a string that you have wrapped in double quotes for instance, and this is totally for instance, so make sure if you you don't really need to do what I'm doing. I don't want you to screw up your uh, your code. But let's just say that to make this work, we needed to put quotes around this term pages here. You can see already Dreamweaver is throwing up errors. They're telling us we're screwing up. Things are going bad. So what you need to do is what's called escaping the character and that is by using a backslash and what that backslash is basically saying is saying hey take this literal this is not the end of the string we really actually want this to be a double quote 
and you're going to need to do it with the uh, the other one too and then everything is back to normal again just to make sure if you did do that make sure you remove that that was purely for example purposes because that's what we're going to do uh, here later on we're going to do that to these fields here there's some functions that will automatically add those slashes so that they can so that the uh, data can be put in the database without PHP getting tripped up on it but at the same time we're also going to remove those slashes it's kind of a tricky little scenario but we basically sneak those things in there because if you don't do both um, then you're going to end up with a post or you're going to end up with a data that has slashes next to all the double quotes or single quotes and those slashes will continue and continue and each time you edit something it'll add another slash and um, let's just say when I first started doing this stuff uh, I ran into that issue a few times and uh, it was pretty troublesome so we'll make sure we avoid that now I'm trying to keep the uh, the videos here a little shorter from here on out uh, I've been getting on uh, I've been getting into the habit of making some of the videos go on for an hour or sometimes even more and uh, I want to make sure everybody can you know easily take in this digest it and uh, I mean if you if you want to watch an hour then you by all means you move on to the next lesson but if not you know I don't I don't want to have to make you feel like you gotta sit here for an hour an hour and a half and and try and soak all this in so I'm gonna do my best if uh, if uh, the information warrants moving past a half hour or so then you know I'll do it but uh, I'm gonna try and be a little more mindful of that so sticking with that uh, new rule we'll call it I'm going to quickly show you uh, what we uh, what we refer to as a WYSIWYG what you see is what you get editor and this is going to be the tool we use to kind of spice up our uh, text area here so I'm gonna add and I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna type in it's called tiny MCE uh, there's other WYSIWYGs out there but this is by far I don't know if it's the most popular but I I'd, I'd have to say it's it's got to be up there if it isn't um in fact looks like they may have already uh made up uh, updates since the last time I was here and that wasn't very long ago I'm going to click on try it here so we can see it and here it is this should look pretty familiar I'm sure you've seen this on many sites or something similar and uh this is just one example uh, the editor is so um, robust and uh, rich in its features that uh, you can really you can really customize this to, to suit uh, your needs or the clients needs uh, we can take if we wanted to we could take everything out of here except for the bold button if we wanted to or we could add every single tool that they have. You can skin it, which you see here. This looks a little more like the newer Microsoft products. You can utilize jQuery and add it to your site using jQuery instead, which we may end up doing um maybe not the first time around but uh by the time we're we're further into this we we may switch to the jQuery one 
Uh, it's just a whole bunch of things. Uh, even even styles here. Uh, they allow you to create a style sheet or style sheets that uh, will have classes and IDs in it and uh, you can say you've got a specific style to your website or for a client's website and one of the worst things you can do is give a client control over um, how the text work looks in when they're when they're editing a page I've I've had multiple times where my designs have been um, just destroyed because a client decided they wanted to try every color in the rainbow uh, and their fonts they changed their fonts and things like that and uh, it, it's just a mess so this is a way where you can kind of I don't know make sure they don't screw that up even the uh, even here with the uh, headings and all that you can do some clever CSS and uh, make sure that the client uh, or even yourself doesn't stray from the way the look and feel of the site that you've created uh, or you could you know pretty much strip some of these out and just limit them to the styles um, that's up to you but that's just kind of a look at uh, what we're going to be adding and the only thing I wanted to do before we uh, we conclude this video is I want to spice up the CSS just a little bit in the admin panel and uh, so let's hop back over to Dreamweaver Go ahead and give this UL tag a uh, class. And we'll call it nav underscore side. Let's kind of follow along with uh, the naming convention we have for the other navigation. We'll save that. And now we need to go into CSS and create a rule as soon as Dreamweaver catches up. This is the only thing I've noticed about Dreamweaver 6 so far, is that every time I upload, there seems to be a, a hang-up. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has experienced that or, or not. Let's go ahead and go into CSS here and open up our styles, which, again, I'll remind you, we are going to make some changes here. Um and start cutting this up soon and putting you know navigation rules within its own file and things like that to make things easier to find I also want to note that uh, there's potential for you guys to be hearing the heater turn on and off uh, we got rid of the cricket but uh, the reason we got rid of the cricket is it's now uh, long john season here in uh, good old Indiana and the uh, weather is getting pretty cold so there's not much I can do about the uh, the heater uh, so I apologize for that if it's distracting what I'm going to do to save some time here is I'm going to highlight line 35 here or wherever your nav main um, starts and go ahead and go all the way down to the hover copy this and let's go below here and this would be a good time maybe to start putting in some comments so let's just say sidebar nav negation Go ahead and paste that here. And we're going to change this nav main here to side. 
Now, one thing that is different here than the nav main is that we gave the nav underscore side class to the actual UL tag. So a few things need to change here. We need to we'll just go ahead and we're gonna take this border here. And drag that into here into the UL. Get rid of UL. And get rid of this all together. And then, oops, need to make this underscore side. And let's go ahead and copy this and then paste it on these other ones. I hope you guys are following me here. These are, these are just shortcuts uh, so we don't have to type all this out again. But we're going to remove the UL from each one of these because nav side is the UL in this case. Oops, sorry. Now, one thing that's different from our nav main, of course, is that uh, we have a uh, vertical menu here instead of a horizontal. So the moment I save this and upload it, we should run into a little bit of a situation there we go. So we have a navigation that's similar to this. However, the links are all trying to be vertical or uh, horizontal instead of vertical. So let's just make some simple changes here. And let's get rid of this inline block. Save that. Let's see where we're at with that. Boom. So now we have a little menu here, which I kind of like to add a border. I'm going to cut this out of the nav side, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to put it in the nav list item. So the uh, unordered list as a whole will have a border at the top. And each list item under it will have a border at the bottom. If we were to keep a border at the bottom of the uh, ordered, unordered list, we'd end up having two borders at the bottom because of that last list item. So this is kind of a little bit of trickery to make it get the effect we want here. So we'll save and upload. And there you go. We have these nice snazzy buttons here. Um, this of course could use a lot more formatting, but I wanted to I want to try and sneak in a little bit of CSS whenever I can to slowly start making this thing look look a little prettier, a little more presentable. Um, we are still in the beginning stages of everything, um, but you're getting the idea. Um, hopefully the wheels are turning in your head as to how the uh, the blog might work. The gallery might not be as is uh, obvious to you, but the uh, the blog. Um, hopefully, you can see it's going to be kind of similar to what we're doing here. There's going to be some differences, that's for sure. But uh, we're on the right track. But before we make those, we'll make sure we finish up this page so that we can add new pages if we want and make sure that the uh, kind of formatting of this this little interface here is set up correctly plus we'll add the uh, WYSIWYG and later on we'll, we'll add some more advanced features to the page manager as in moving them around uh, you know sorting them things like that so that's the end of this lesson 
um, in the next lesson we'll take a look at the uh, a little more formatting we'll get the uh, WYSIWYG installed and running at its basic form which uh, <coughs> is really just as simple as placing the library on our server um, library meaning the uh, files that go along with the uh, tiny MC and and one of the, the easiest ways to do this is tell it to just attach to any text field now we may not do that uh, for good but uh, for now that'll work just to get the point across so look forward to seeing you guys in the next video